Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamaz here, and this is going to be my 10.0 Dragonflight Demonology Warlock DPS Guide. And we're going to be covering talents, single target, AoE, rotations, single target, AoE, stats, pets, consumables, gems, enchants, tier gear, and a few other things along the way. Now, if you see any weak ORS add-ons or profiles in this video like to require, links to my Twitch and my Discord down below. We can hop in and grab them all for free. Exclamation mark WA and either will pull the link up for you to my Wago and my Pastebin where they are all there for you guys. If you'd like to support on Patreon, there's a link up here as well as a few other social media links you can check out if you like. With that being said, let's just jump right into the video. So getting into the Demonology class tree, I would say off the bat here, the class tree for Warlock is not incredibly in-depth when it comes to damage-based traits, but it has a lot of utility and a lot of defensiveness. So off the bat, Demonic Circle baseline for every Warlock spec. It's well-known, it's iconic, it's Demonic Circle. One point is being spent in Fell Domination and one point in Burning Rush. Burning Rush being a movement speed increase, but you take damage whenever it's active. Fell Domination being a pet cast and reduction in once every three minutes. Now, the cool thing about Burning Rush is that we have Fiendish Stride, which reduces the damage taken from Burning Rush by 50% and gives you a bit more of a movement speed increase as well. This makes it essential so that Burning Rush can be active nearly all the time and you take very little damage from the effect. It's good for just, it's good in raiding, it's good in Mythic Plus, it's good for that movement speed increase, and taking no damage from it is incredibly strong in Fiendish Stride. Two points in Fell Armor, two points in Demon Skin, uh, just flat damage reduction taken, a bit of Soul H value, a bit more Soul H value here as well. We're going to spend one point in Curses of Enfeeblement, getting in Curse of Tongues and Curse of Exhaustion. One point in Mortal Coil, being a short cooldown, 20% heal, and an end cap if need be, going into one point in Demonic Fortitude, one point in Wrathful Minion, one point in Demonic Inspiration, and one point in Demonic Embrace. So Demonic Embrace and Demonic Fortitude, 15% stamina increase for yourself. Wrathful Minion and Demonic Inspiration, both being a, just a little bit of a pet damage increase whenever you, whenever you fill a Soul Shard, whether you're Destro, Demo, or Aph, they both get the same effect. Now, coming out of this row, you have the option of Demonic Gateway here, which can be good in certain spots, okay in others, and dead in others. Now, the thing with Demonic Gateway is that if you take if you don't take this ability in certain spots, I wouldn't fault you for it, but then realistically, you don't have Shadow Fury, or at least easy access to it, because going through Nightmare or Greater Banish and Banish is even more niche than Gateway being bad in certain spots. So one point in Gateway, one point in Shadow Fury, one point in Sweet Souls, which is an iconic trait from Legion returning, baseline more Hellstone healing, plus whenever somebody eats a Hellstone in your party or raid, you get that healing effect as well. Very, very strong. Now, you have the option of Strength of Will or Dark Accord here. A shorter cooldown on ending resolve which is your main dr or strength of will giving you a larger percent reduction on ur personally it's going to depend what setting you're in if it's like more frequent damage you might just want to say hey dark accord if you're in a setting where it's not as where damage is not as frequent but larger damage events coming in you could just say hey give me strength of will up to you personal preference a point goes here regardless so one point coming out of sweet souls into dark pact is very important as well dark pact is a one minute cooldown however Specking in the Frequent Donor makes it a 45 second cooldown, which is exceptionally strong. A very large shield on you every 45 seconds makes it so easy to, easy to negate incoming damage and in raiding, Mythic Plus, and PvP. It makes it very hard to kill the Warlock with a large shield up and a UR popped. Very, very strong. Now, in the next row here, we have uh, two points in Lifeblood, just passive Hellstone healing. You have nine points left, so you can go a mix of other abilities on here. We're going to put one point in Soul Link for 10% damage being dealt to your Demon, two points in Synergy, two points in Soul Conduit being a flat damage gain, chance to proc a damage increase on either you or your pet, two points in Soul Conduit giving you a chance to refund a shard whenever you spend one. And you have four points left here. Now, as Demonology, if you are playing Nether Portal the Talent, Soul Burn with a macro can be a DPS gain. It might empower circles and gateways and drain lights and all that stuff, but if you take Soul Burn with Nether Portal, it is a six second cooldown off the GCD. Nether Portal gives you pets whenever you cast shard consuming spells. Soul Burn consumes a shard. So unless they fix the synergy, Soul Burn is a DPS gain. If they do, I'll try to up at the comment section saying, hey, it doesn't work anymore. But currently Soul Burn is a DPS gain for Demonology playing Nether Portal. And you have three points left. One should go into either Summon Soul Keeper or Inquisitor's Gaze. They're both bad in damage. Uh, Inquisitor's Gaze is more single target based versus being more AOE based. They're both bad in damage, but some damage is more than no damage. And your final option here being, well, Fell Synergy, and your final option being uh, a point in Profane Bargain, a point in Resolute Barrier, Grim Feast being sort of mediocre. You can put a point in Amplified Curse. Even if you even if you want, you can pull a point out of Shadow Fury and put two points in Curse, Teaching the Seder. You can go Banish, Greater Banish. The cool thing here, the Warlock Clash Tree, you have some nodes you want to hit, like Synergy, Soul Conduit. 
these four or these two for example your damage based traits but there's a lot of room for flexibility for utility you need banish grab it you need shadow fury grab it gateway grab it curses grab it amplify curse grab it if you need bell packed for more pet summons grab it you have options with the warlock clash tree it is incredibly customizable if you don't need any of that stuff put two points in profane bargain less damage taken you're a walking tank regardless with a lot of utility Okay, so getting into Demonology single target talents, I hope that you are a fan of Nether Portal because that is pretty much the build that you're going to end up playing. I, I, I would assume in most single target settings. So going into the first point here being called Dreadstalkers, one point in an alien training, one point in From the Shadows, one point Fell and Steel, grabbing Grimoire Felgar over here. I have one point in Fell Sunder here. You could put it in like Demonic Calling if you want for one point. You could put it in Dreadlash, I guess, I guess theoretically if you wanted for just 10% more damage on your dogs. I don't think it's worth it. I think Fuss Hunter is better than both of those, but it's up to you. Uh, Grimoire Felguard, obviously. Demonic Meteor, two points in Ripped Through the Portal for your second or third dog. Uh, Tyrant, obviously. Soulbound Tyrant, two out of two. Grand Warlock's Design. On the left side here, obviously Demon Bolt. One point in Demonic Knowledge, one point in Shadow's Bite, one point in Dread Calling, one point in Power Siphon. Importantly, one point in Inner Demons. Now, this is going to be a Nether Portal slash Demon Bolt hybrid build which you're playing both you're playing the best of both worlds because your two piece amplifies demon bolt damage obviously and your two piece doesn't need empower fell storm but you're getting that demon bolt damage amp which is further amplified by fell covenant by power siphon by sack souls you also have nether portal and the full value that it brings so you're playing portal there's rules of volition and ghoul dance ambition which is your pit lord this is a bit of rng going into your pit lord so power siphon here two points in fell covenant and the cool thing about one point inner demons is that you get two imps passively for sack souls which they do they, they're out passively but one point still gets you two imps putting a second point in it just gets you a higher chance to summon a random demon so one point still two imps and two imps means you can pre power siphon so you can pop power siphon for two stacks of demonic core before the boss is pulled which gives you bigger tyrants bigger nether portals more value with your sack souls all the above the build's very synergistic it's just not it's just very complicated at times to play in single target and is very demanding with your nether portal opener, your demon bolt maintenance with bell covenant, with power siphon, with other demon bolt based effects, but it is what it is. It's the world we live in. Now, there are some builds playing non demon bolt, just playing portal stuff, playing like full fell might, fell sunder, dread lash, all the above. They are fine. They're close to this. But this has been the build that's done the best for me in pure single target testing. Now, if you're looking at playing more of like a cleave build, Something along the lines of still playing Portal, but having access to Implosion over here, having access to Antoran Armaments, which gives you more Felgar damage, more Felgar damage, more Felstorm, more Demonic Strength damage, Expendables here, still the same Tyrant Empowerment, Tyrant, Summon Tyrant, uh, or Tyrant, Soulbound Tyrant, Grand Warlock's Design, still Portal, still still no Zerules, and still Gul'dan's, but no Fel Covenant here. You're going over here into Antoran Armaments, once again, Fel, Fel, Felgar damage increase, uh, a little bit of social, a little bit of social value, but not a big deal. Soul Strike is just sort of whatever. I'm not even playing it anyways. We're playing Vile Fiend. And we're playing Expendables here. So, Implosion, obviously, for AoE. You are indeed also playing Dreadlash. And this build's good in, like, Stack Cleave, Dreadlash, Dog Chomps, Third Dog, FTS, Third Dog being here, and Imp Gang Boss. So, we'll talk about this build in the, in the rotation section in a minute here as well. But Stack Cleave, a lot of fights in this raid are Stack Cleave or Cleave-based fights. You want Implosion. You want you want Dreadlash. You want this for Felstorm damage. This build, I'd say, even though it's like not as good in single target, is probably the more valuable raid, the more valuable build going into the first raid. Now, when it comes to demonology and AoE, Mythic Plus settings, this is the build that I've mostly landed on. I think most people have actually when it comes to like just Mythic Plus kind of scenarios. Now, I have one point left here. You can put it either in like, you can put it in Inner Demons. You are playing Imp Gang Boss. So the Imps that spawn from Inner Demons can also be Imp Gang Bosses. There is that dimension. Uh, some people opt for Inner Demons. Some people opt for PS. Some people opt for Soul Strike. I think we're taking Soul Strike here in Cleave. Plus you have Antoran Armaments making Cleave. And this is the gist of it. Similar to the Portal build, just instead of going through Portal, we're going down here, grabbing Infernal Command for uh, Imp Dreadstalker damage increase when your Felguard's active. And going into Guillotine. Now, I will say they're... If this is the Mythic Plus kind of build of Demonology, there's more than one way to build this. I think Guillotine is fine. I think it's worthwhile in AoE. It's not incredibly OP like it was early on. It was fixed. There's a bug with it. It was fixed. It's fine for what it does, but Demonology's profile, even without Guillotine, is big stacked cleave. You've got Soul Strike cleaving, Implosion, your third dogs, your third dog, Dreadlash, FTS, Imp Gang Boss giving larger implosions, Felstorm, Demonic Strength. 
Felmite, Felsunder. You've already got a lot of like just stack cleave with Gmail. Now you can certainly have more with Guillotine. This is the general build I've seen in most Mythic Plus settings. However, there was some changes towards the end of beta that were going like this. They're pulling points out of here and going Nurzuls or Nether Portal, uh, Nurzuls. I'm pulling a point, I believe, from Expendables into Gul'dan's Ambition, which you don't get Guillotine, you don't get Expendables, or you don't get Infernal Command. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Theoretically, you can pull a point from up here. Just go like this and go into Expendables if you wanted either way. But this build here gets a lot of single target Mythic Plus with Portal, Nurzul, Gul'dan's. A lot more than you think, and you still get the big Demo Cleave profile because, like I said, you still have Demonic Strength. You still have DS, you still have Fellstorm, you still have Fell Sunder, you still have Implosion, you still have your third dog, you still have Dreadlash, you still have FTS, you still have Imp Gang Boss. You still have that huge cleave profile. Now, I do feel that this builds a, bit, a little bit more, maybe the word advanced isn't the right word to use, but Portal Management Plus is certainly uh, a wild thing. Um, but if you're looking for more single target, which being honest, this build here, which is recommended for most Mythic Plus stuff is Demonology, sort of lacks. It might seem like it's good. Demo's fine in single target, but a lot of its single target power lies in Portal, Nerds, Wolves, Cool Dance, and Demon Bolt. And this build's not playing any Portal and no Demon Bolt. So I tested this build last week in beta, last Mythic Plus testing week, like going into Portal and this, and I thought it was really solid and felt like we really didn't lose a whole lot not having Guillotine or Infernal Command. So up to you. Links down below to both, but uh, both are good in AoE. Demo just feels good. Now, when it comes to gems and dragonflight, you're limited to one primal gem at a time. And the one you want to acquire is the Fierce Illimited Diamond, granting 75 primary stat and 66 haste. Now, if you're looking for more just general quality gems you can wear more than one of, the Quick Yasemaral grants a whopping 88 haste. However, this is a pure secondary stat gem. There are a handful of gems that have two secondary stats on them. For example, like Keen Yasemaral, granting 70 haste and 33 mastery and Keen Neltharite granting 70 mastery and 33 haste. Now, if you're playing Affliction and Demonology, chances are high you're going to want either Quick Ephemerald, Keen Ephemerald, or Keen Neltharite with your one Fierce Illimited Diamond. If you're playing Destruction, Crafty Ephemerald granting 70 haste and 33 crit, or the Crafty Alexstrasite granting 70 crit and 33 haste are possibly the better option for you, but in the long run, Sims would be the best way to tell what gems are best for your own character. Getting into enchants, Sophic Devotion is going to be the weapon enchant you're after in Dragonflight, and it is a primary stat increase for 15 seconds whenever it procs on your main weapon. Your cloak enchant will be homebound speed, which is unsurprisingly a speed increase. Your chest enchant will be waking stats, which is a baseline stat increase on your chest. Now, bracers are in an odd spot. You have Devotion with speed being theoretically your best enchant in Dragonflight. However, Eternal Intellect is still an option from Shadowlands due to the fact that it's not eye level capped or restricted by any means. So theoretically, you still can get Intellect on your Bracers, but we'll see if that lasts in the actual Dragonflight launch. If that doesn't last, Devotion of Speed is the best option. On your legs, you want to acquire Frozen Spell Thread. Now you can make these yourself if you're a tailor, or you can work order them from a tailor somewhere to get the actual Intellect and Stamina increase on your legs. Any caster can get these in the game via a work order, even if you're not a tailor. Your boots, you want Planes Runner's Breeze on, which is unsurprisingly a speed increase. And your ring is most likely Devotion of Haste. However, it could be Mastery, depending on what your spec you're playing. The best way to tell is going to be running a RaidBoss.com sim for your own character to tell on your actual ring enchant. Now, as far as other enhancements are concerned in Dragonflight, your main flask or file will actually be File of Elemental Chaos, which grants secondary stats in a random bonus effect and lasts half an hour. Your main potion will be Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power, granting a large amount of primary stat for half a minute on a five minute cooldown. You'll want to use Howling Runes in your weapon to give you a large amount of haste for two hours, very similar to Oils and Shadowlands. And as far as food is concerned, Grand Banquet with Kalalak, which is a feast, grants you 76 primary stat. If you don't have feasts though, things like Faded Fortune Cookies, which gives the same amount of primary stat, or Timely Demise slash Sizzling Seafood Medley, give either pure haste or a mix of haste and mastery, which will most likely be your best bet when it comes to personal food in Dragonflight. So when it comes to the Mythology's two-piece and four-piece tier set in Dragonflight, it is called the Scale Sworn Cultist set, and the two-piece, straight up passively, Demon Bolt and Felstorm damage increased by 20%. Now, there are a lot of Demon Bolt builds being played in single target, some Demon Bolt hybrid builds with Nether Portal and things like that. So buffing Demon Bolt's damage is solid. You've got things like Power Siphon, things like Inner, inner Demons with Sack Souls, Sack Souls, Fell Covenant, 
buffing demon bolt damage even more plus it's a decent bit of our damage i think it's like five ish percent it's a little bit a solid passive buff but the bigger buff the two piece or the bigger thing is fell storm the 20 percent increase to fell storm damage is massive on top of fell storm just baseline buff there we have an alien training 20 percent more fell guard damage you have entorn armaments your fell guard deals 20 percent more damage you have fell and steel fell storm deals 10 percent more damage you have demonic strength your fell guard deals 400 percent more damage when you cast demonic strength in a fell storm there's so many stacking fell storm damage amps on top of just fell thunder and fell might being good on their own that work well with the two piece with the four piece to be fair there's not much synergy here it's just worth mentioning the fell storm you know kit but there's a lot of just raw value in that 20 percent fell storm damage amp that demonology has in the two piece now the four piece says demon bolt has a chance to make your next hand of ghoul then instant and deal 50 percent increased damage it was buffed a few days ago to 150 it might not have been a beta yet but the 150 buff is nice this is a pretty minuscule damage increase being 50 percent it's something at 150 it's fine i'm not a huge fan of the instant cast hand at times it's a little unpredictable but at the same time with more play getting used to it i'm sure it'll be fine uh it, it is a bit of a dps increase being instant cast a minor one and the 150 percent damage increase if you're cleaving it with a plus with hand and gul'dan cast it's gonna be good even in single target it'll bump hand and gul'dan cleave i guess splash damage up a little bit even if you're just hitting one target overall on a scale of, uh, from a to f it's probably a solid solid b b minus but it's really carried by the two piece demon bolt and Bellstorm damage increase is the better of the two bonuses hands down so when it comes to demonology's pet of choice unlike destro and affliction that play the imp succubus fell hunter and voidwalker at times demonology plays solely the fell guard because the fell guard is what demonology is essentially built around now our talents demonic strength fell might fell thunder and alien training and torn armaments fell and steel they all revolve around the fell guard's damage increasing its damage or modifying abilities to make it do more damage the fell guard is the glue that holds demon together being your only real pet of choice now it has three abilities the first being axe toss which is a half a minute cooldown that is basically a four second stun and or interrupt it was changed to being an interrupt in early shadowlands and this replaces your fell hunter sort of as demonology being your kick and mythic plus the second ability is called fell storm which is on a baseline half a minute cooldown however it can be 20 seconds if you're playing the fell might talent and it basically causes your fell guard to just spin in a whirlwind kind of effect dealing damage to every mob that it hits and it also applies fell thunder the talent if you're playing it which is a damage increase to every target that it hits it's good in single target it's good in aoe you'll basically let it cast on cooldown and just go from there the final ability is called legion strike which is basically just a passive frontal cleave that it does every once in a while there's a bit of healing reduction on it but for the most part it doesn't really matter a whole lot the fell guard is the one pet you play as demonology and it's sort of the glue that holds the spec together in a sense and there really aren't any other options so when it comes to demonology's nether portal demon bolt opener playing power siphon the gist of it is you want to cast as many individual shard consuming spells as possible while your nether portal is active now you can pre-cast power siphon before the boss is pulled thanks to inner demons having two imps out which gives you two stacks of demonic core before the boss is pulled i put an opener on the screen here the shard count next to the spell is what you should be at after casting the spell this rotation it's also with zero soul conduit refunds you will get soul conduit re refunds at times you have to learn how to react to them from pole to pole there's rng in the demo opener but the big thing follow the prior system of opening on precast power siphon two shadow bolts to five shards nether portal to four shards then soul burn macro instantly grimoire felguard summon biofiend to one shard and then without any refunds you cast demon bolt to three call dread stalkers to one shard then soul burn Demon Bolt with two shards, Hand of Gul'dan to zero shards, Trinkets, Potions, Racials here. This is to buff the Pit Lord. Then Summon Demonic Tyrant, which brings five shards thanks to Soulbound Tyrant. Hand of Gul'dan, Soul Burn, Hand of Gul'dan. Then Demonic Strength, and right after Demonic Strength, cast two Shadow Bolts to stack Fell Covenant before stacks, refresh it before it falls. Then you build the five shards via Shadow Bolt, cast Power Siphon once off cooldown cast called Dreadstalkers, cast Hand of Gul'dan, and dump those Demon Bolts. Now, once again, this opener will change a lot depending on chart refunds, RNG. That's just the nature of Demonology and its opener. The best way to learn it is practice the rotation multiple times on a dummy, watch part of this video over and over multiple times, and get used to spamming Soul Burn as much as you can when it's off cooldown using the Soul Burn cancel or macro below. RNG is RNG, Portal's RNG, but with practice, the opener 
it's not as complicated as it may seem. So when it comes to Demonology's Tyrant setup in combat, as long as you're playing Grand Warlock's design, your Tyrant will be a one minute cooldown and your Vile Fiend is 45 seconds. So you hold every Vile Fiend for Grand Warlock's design as long as you're playing it for that one minute Tyrant profile. If you're not cast Vile Fiend on cooldown, it'll line up every minute and a half for your Tyrant. So as long as you're playing Grand Warlock's design, one minute Tyrant, you'll build the five shards via Shadow Bolt. You want to have three Demonic Core procs for this, which is instant cast Demon Bolts. Build the five shards, cast Vile Fiend, the four shards, one Shadow Bolt back to five shards, and then cast Call Dreadstalkers, which without refunds should put you with three shards. At this point, you cast Demon Bolt back to five, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan, Demon Bolt, Hand of Gul'dan. Now at this point, if you have no shards left, you can cast Summon Demonic Tyrant. If you have anywhere from one to three, cast one final Hand of Gul'dan. As long as you have enough time remaining on your Call Dreadstalkers and Vile Fiend to not time out, and then cast Summon Demonic Tyrant. This should get you a baseline, nine imps, nine to like 12, depending on RNG and refunds, three called three dogs being called Dread Stalkers in your Tyrant and the Bile Fiend extension. And as long as you're staying in combat, your Tyrant is roughly a minute cooldown every single time playing Grand Warlock's design. So when it comes to demonology cooldowns and implosion rotations at slash AOE, this is the opening you wanna follow. If you have full CDs, everything heading into a pack, you'll build the five shards, cast Grimoire Felguard, cast a Shadow Bolt, then cast called Dreadstalkers at five shards, down to three. Cast two Shadow Bolts to build the five or a Soul Strike if you have the talent selected. Hand of Gul'dan, Shadow Bolt, and typically Hand of Gul'dan. You can get more imps in there if you have Demonic Core procs. Then cast Summon Demonic Tyrant and Demonic Strength. Now, it's very important to note here that you also have the Guillotine talent in AoE at times. Guillotine, casting a Guillotine while Demonic Strength or Fellstorm is being cast will cancel the Demonic Strength or Fellstorm cast. So you want to make sure that he's not doing either when you cast your guillotine. Once the demonic strength ends, then you can cast the actual guillotine and you're good to go. Besides that, you're casting dogs being called Dread Stalkers on cooldown and you're imploding. Now the implosion rotation has changed a bit due to the talent Imp Gang Boss being, well, given to us in Dragonflight. Imp Gang Boss says summoning a wild imp has a 5% chance to summon an Imp Gang Boss instead. An Imp Gang Boss deals 50% increased damage, but the big thing here is that when Imp Gang Bosses are imploded, they summon a wild imp. That wild imp can indeed also be an imp gang boss. So this sort of changes how you want to implode in a sense in Dragonflight. You still, you know, build a handful of imps, but you want to implode before the imps expire. So I have a, imp, an actual imp tracker to the right of my character here on my character screen. When they reach that final one being like their one final firebolt cast, that is when I'm imploding. Well, typically you do still have a handful of imps being, I don't know, six, nine to 12, depending on refunds and casts like that with the amount of core sacks and all the above. The big thing you want to implode before your imps start expiring. So you might have a set that has, you know, one cast left, a set that has three casts left, and a set you just summon that has six casts left. But you want to implode before the first set expires, because if you let an imp gang boss expire, it will not spawn another imp. It's only when imploded. Now, outside of that, you still want to cast called Dreadstalkers on cooldown. You want to keep casting your normal rotation for the most part and just focus on imploding before imps expire in AUE or two or more stack targets. Now, outside of that, demonology is basically the same. You don't want to implode when your tyrant is active unless you have to for whatever reason. You'll have very large implosions coming out of your tyrant being 20 plus imps. And when 9, 10, 11 of those, even like 5, 6 are imp gang bosses, when you send that massive implosion, you get 5, 6, 7, 8 imps back, which half them can be imp gang bosses again. So that goes into another implosion and it chains from there. Imp gang bosses change the way demonology plays in Dragonflight in a fun way in AoE. Implosion was already fun, but imp gang boss, imploding all of your imps and getting half them back, feels really good and really rewarding. Thanks for watching guys that should just about wrap it up uh like i said honestly demonology i think is in a pretty good spot heading in the dragon flight mythic plus we've got a good stacked aoe cleave profile with implosion fell storm demonic strength bombers if you want it uh dog cleave even though they've been there for multiple times imp gang boss all of that and our single target is not bad it can be even better if you shift towards more of a nether portal single target kind of build in mythic plus the most customizable it might not be incredible in like spread cleave scenarios like where there's two bosses or two targets that are just you know 10 yards apart but hey we have destro and uh we have after that as far as raiding is concerned i think it's in a good spot a lot of the raids this tier a lot of the fights this tier have a lot of movement on them which doesn't really favor another portal as much but there is stat cleave a lot of single target prior cleave as well so 
I think Demo's in a pretty solid spot overall, heading in the Dragonflight and uh, Vault the Incarnate. So, now once again, any Week Warriors add ons or profiles you saw in the video you'd like to acquire, I have a link to both my Discord and my Twitch down below if you want to hop in them. Uh, grab them in either place, exclamation mark WA in chat, Twitch, and or Discord will pull it up for you. And uh, yeah, with all that being said, I want to give one final shout out to my patrons. Again, thank you a million times, guys, for all support on Patreon. Really, truly appreciate it. It allows me to keep doing what I'm doing for you guys, making content. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it a million times. Thank you so much. Like I said, I'm pumped for Demo heading into Dragonflight. I think it's in a pretty good spot. Uh, we'll see what happens with tuning over the next few weeks. And if anything, if anything changes as far as like uh, guides or rotation is concerned, I'll put a link down below in the comment section. Uh, I'll pin a comment probably if anything changes of relevance. If I have to make a new video, hey, I'll make it. But uh, I think for the most part, we're what, four days away from launch, probably less when this video goes up. I would hope and assume that most tuning and major changes are done. But then again, every difficulty in Vault of the Incarnates was live at the same time. So we'll see where it goes. With that being said, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, hit the like and sub buttons below. It helps out a ton. And I will catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.